Madison Square Park Shake Shack squirrels have absolutely no shame. They would die. They would die if they didn't live off of Shake Shack french fries, y'all. returning viewers and welcome if this is your first time watching. Hope you like it. My name is Jacqueline. This is the Brooklyn Knit Folk podcast episode 10 and this is a podcast about knitting mostly but my DIY crafty life. Quilting goes creeping in a lot more now than it has in the past and will continue to do so. So hopefully that's something you're interested in. Um, I hope you guys have had a really great couple of weeks. I certainly have. I'm filming this a little bit early um, because I have so much to show you. It's not like gonna be a two hour episode or anything like that. Don't, don't worry. But um, yeah, so I just thought I would go ahead and film because I had a pocket of time to do so. Anyway, let's get started. Prizes! The 1000 subscriber giveaway. Um, thread has now closed. I have drawn two winners from Random Number Generator. There were 230 entries. So crazy. Even crazier that you guys choose to follow me every single, every single week, but, or every other week, I guess. Anyway, reminder of what the prizes are, just really quick. They are some handmade by myself project bags with these little bird prints on them, and one skein of Andre Sue Knits Puddle Jumper, fingering weight, and one skein of Volumine Yarns in DK in Stellar Banshee. And then I'll throw in a bunch of other extra little goodies and stuff this thing to the brand before it goes out to you. So without further ado, the winner of the Andre Sue Knits skein is my sister's knitter, number 13, who is Andy. Also, the craziest thing, when I was checking out your Ravelry profile, you have the same birthday as me, and we were born in the same state. I was born in Arizona, I lived there until I was eight, and my birthday is September 8th. How crazy is that? Seems so serendipitous. And then the winner of the Wollenvine uh, pa prize package is going to be number 200, Jillian, or not Jillian, sorry, Jillian. Jillian. And she lives in Brooklyn, I believe, so that was also crazy. It's like my past and my present all coming together. Isn't that just so poetic? So yeah, congratulations, you guys. Um, message me with your addresses, or I'll get in touch with you in a couple days. I want to give you a chance to watch it on here first, and I'll get your prizes mailed out to you. So yay! Yay! Right. Next thing. So Mina of the Knitting Expat podcast has donated a copy of her latest beautiful brioche pattern, uh, Le Mole, which means the squishy. And um, we're going to do a giveaway for that on this episode. And I will announce that winner in the next, uh, the next episode, so two weeks from now. There's also another giveaway, which I'll mention at the end of the episode. There's so many giveaways. You guys are sending such really great prizes to share with the world, so that's awesome. Um, but I want to give the uh, pattern of the brioche pattern that Mina designed to somebody who actually really wants to knit it. So that one's going to be a giveaway in uh, Ravelry. So just go to the Ravelry thread. You can enter over there. And um, yeah, I'm sure I'll ask some sort of question prompt or something like that to see what you're interested in winning. All right. Oh, one other thing before we get started. Brooklyn Knit Folk in the City. So you may or may not have noticed, but I uploaded an episode last night of, um, it's just a little short, less than seven minutes, like six and a half minutes long, about Gage Intention. And it says, Gage Intention, Brooklyn Knit Folk, um, 
in New York City, which is a little redundant. I'm still not sure about the name. Anyway, what it is, is just like in the thread about um, the 1,000 subscriber giveaway, I asked what you guys want to see more of on the podcast. And an overwhelmingly response was, more clips and bits and pieces of New York City, which I am happy to do. I just don't want to overwhelm or bore people who don't really care about that stuff. So I am decided I'm going to make little vlogs here and there. It won't be any kind of regular schedule. It'll just be kind of like, oh, I'm at this really cool restaurant. Why not vlog about it? Or I'm at this really cool event. Why not vlog about it? Or here's a yarn store about New York City in, in New York City. Why not vlog about it? They may or may not be related to knitting, it's kind of just more about my, uh, my life in general. So if you're curious and want to watch little snippets of New York life, um, you can check out those videos. So the first one does happen to be yarn related, it's about Gage and Tension, which is closing its last weekend, is this weekend. Sad, I know. I mentioned it in the other one so I won't be redundant here, but it was the place where I've met most of my current knitting friends, so it has a really special place in my heart, and thank you so much to Michelle for having the store while you did. So yeah, the Brooklyn Knit Folk in the city, a new kind of series, I guess, a mini-series if you will, um, of just kind of vlogs about New York. So if you want to watch it, great. If not, that's totally fine too. And if you guys have a suggestion for another name, I'll happily take them from you because Brooklyn Knit Folk in the city is like, or in New York City or in the city, it's a little bit redundant. So if you have a cool name, let me know. Take in suggestions. Let's do it! All right, I have no finished objects this week, but I, too, I do have two half objects, two hoes. The first one is one that you've already seen. Maybe, if I can find it, there it is. If you guys could see the amount of stuff I have in this table in front of me, it's crazy. So we have a finished sock. This is just a vanilla sock, and I showed it on the last episode. It combines patterns from Woolen Vine's favorite socks and Hermione's everyday sock to kind of grasp the heel and uh, heel flap and heel turn. So it's done. I don't have sock blockers, so it's not as pretty as if I, if I did. Maybe you can put it on my arm. I'm pleased with how it came out, and I think my Kitchener on the toe is okay. I mean, it leaves a little to be desired. I will say, once I get to um, works in progress, that Judy's Magic Cast On for the toe up sock is amazing. It really is. Anyway, an eye of partridge heel. The only thing that I kind of need to figure out how to do how to do better is where I'm picking up stitches. I don't know if you're gonna, yeah, you can see that. There's um, a hole kind of where the gusset is. So I think, I mean, I can fix that easily just by kind of, you know, taking some yarn and kind of whip stitching it together. But um, yeah, uh, the fit is okay. It's a little bit big. I think my gauge has loosened up a little bit, actually. Maybe it's just when I knit socks, I'm not sure, but I knit this on a 2.25 millimeter, which is a US 1, high, high, uh, 9 inch circulars, and it's a little bit baggy on the leg. The fit around the foot is okay. Um, I cast on 64 stitches, so I think in the future, I'm used to wearing my socks with a lot of negative ease, so I think in the future I'll probably cast on something in the 50s, so probably like 56 or 58 stitches. And this is just a regular rib, but I think next time I want to try a twisted rib because I really like how that looks. The yarn is Cascade Heritage Paints, and I don't remember the number off the top of my head, but it, it will be in the show notes if you want to check that out. It's this gorgeous light purple with flexive yellow. I'm using it as my stripy socks cal, but I'm not so sure I'm going to finish in time. For that since I have other socks and needles. But yeah, so I haven't cast on the other one yet. I have no intention of um, acquiring second sock syndrome, but I have not cast it on yet. But here's the cake. It's lovely. And I like I said in the previous episode, I really do like I really do like these nine inch uh, circulars. I do think in the future I bought another uh, another pair of these that I will knit uh, socks concurrently because I will say it is a bit of a drag like oh I just had cast on this other sock and I'm already finished 
So I think that I will, if I'm, uh, once I learn two at a time socks in the future, if I like that, then I guess I'll stick with that. But otherwise I will probably from now on be knitting socks concurrently on two different needles for now. So that is uh, hoe number one. Okay, so the second hoe, you guys, sorry, the actual person who it's for just texted me. So my sister uh, is pregnant. She's due in July. It's my first time being an aunt. I'm very excited. She's having a baby boy. I am thrilled. Can't wait. I want to make all of the things, as you should, as the cool aunt, you know? So I already knew I was going to make a quilt for the baby. And I had a pattern picked out. I'll insert a picture of the pattern here for you to look at. It's a gorgeous pattern. Um, I'm cutting it in half. So it won't be that full size. It'll be like kind of half of that size. And I'm going to give you kind of a little rundown of how I did it because I think it might be useful for people. So I took the, the original quilt cut the picture in half in design programs, but you could easily do something like this in PowerPoint even. So if you know how to use PowerPoint, then you can do this. So cut the pattern in half. Si I looked up the uh, size of a crib quilt, which I don't have written down, but it's not necessary to know that right now for the purposes of this. And then I started with the largest piece in the pattern which is a square. I figured out the size of the first piece and then kind of built it out from there. So I just created shapes on top of the original picture and color coded them so I could figure out how many fabrics that I had and wrote down the sizes of the fabric. So after starting by knowing I have an eight by eight inch square here, I could figure out the size of the one below, which will be eight inches across and four inches down if I'm drawing on top of the original pattern, like I said, and I want to make it an even number, so I just kind of size it up to whatever the next rounded up number is. So these pieces here ended up being eight inches across uh, by four inches tall, and then eight plus four is 12, but the little divider pieces in the middle here are one inch high, one inch tall in height. So if you add eight plus one plus four, then you know that these pieces right here are 13 inches tall and so on. So that's kind of like my process for how I built this out. It's how I do it with a lot of quilts. I'm not so concerned with making quilts the exact size of like what queen says, what queen um, size comforters should be you know, or something like that. I just kind of get around that dimension. And then also keeping in mind that seam allowances, which I did not really account for in the quilt, the boss one that I showed you guys in the previous episode, the two inch square quilt. Seam allowances are gonna take up a quarter of an inch on, the si on each side of the seam. So you're gonna lose half an inch on the width and on the height of every single piece that you are sewing together. So just keep that in mind um, if you want to do something similar, like say you're past your first square patchwork quilt and you want to do something a little bit uh, more intricate or piece to kind of piece together. Um, just keep that in mind that when you're kind of designing a pattern, if you're not following an exact pattern from a book, which is fine too, but I just saw this pattern on Pinterest, really liked it, there weren't instructions, so I was like, eh, we'll wing it, figure it out. So you're going to lose half an inch of um, fabric on your seams whenever you make that together. So just something else to keep in mind. So I went to Joann's, took a train, it was lovely, and just kind of went by myself and did some fabric shopping. Let me show you some of the fabrics I got. Got this chevron, it's like a gold metallic chevron. It's a very mods fabric that I got. This one. Sorry, I go through them quickly so you're not bored to death of watching me do this. Rain clouds. Starburst. Leaf. You get the idea. I won't sit here and show you every single one of them. What I will show you is the whole top of the baby quilt. Isn't it so cute? If 
I do say so myself. These little foxes and this lake life. Is that showing me what I want you to show you? No, there we go. These are like lake life scenes. It's like boy-ish and baby-ish. The only, but not overtly baby, which is kind of my style. I hope my sister likes it too. The only one that's like kind of overtly baby is this fox fabric right here. And sorry, there are like threads all over it because I haven't done anything. I haven't cut them yet. So we got plaids. Her nursery theme is like a woodlands theme. So I'm so excited about this. I think she's going to love it. My one uh, qualm, I wish I had picked out a darker gray for the divider fabric. It does match and it does go with it, but it's just not as much contrast as I was hoping for based on the original picture that I saw that has a pretty high, pretty high contrast. So yeah. Da, da, da. I haven't me measured it yet, but it should be somewhere around a crib size quilt. So that is a hoe. And this is going to be the backing fabric that I use. So just a navy polka dot. Oh, I'm so excited. I cannot wait. I've been wanting to post pictures of it on Instagram, but of course I can't because Lara will see it. So she's been banned from the podcast, so she can't watch it. But I cannot wait to see the look on her face when she opens it. So exciting. So exciting. And that is all of my half objects. So now we'll move into works in progress. I have only knit an undiscernible amount on the void shawl, but for people who may or may people who have, have not blah, tripping over words today. For people who have not seen it before, this is the void shawl by Melanie Berg, knit with wool folk yarn, which I have gone on and on and on and on and on about because it really is that amazing. Super, super soft. And I just love the pattern. It's very geometric. So, just show you that real quick, because it's not really, but like, I don't know, three rows of progress on it. I'm still loving it. I just want to make time for other projects, and it's my um, treat project, because I just don't want it to be over. I love it so much. But this week, I really am kind of wanting to devote some time to it, because it's been a while since I've picked it up with any kind of serious game. All right, the next thing, the fine and dandy cow. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen this took a lot of perseverance. This is a tale of woe is me and multiple cast ons. I started and restarted this project four times. Like I said, my gauge has really loosened up lately. I guess knitting just really relaxes me because my gauge is like, yeah, super, super loose. The sock could have fit a baby's head the first few that I tried. So unfortunately the pattern does not have smaller sizing right now, just the Sweater Co. is in the uh, process of designing um, the smaller version. But she did give me some instructions kind of in the Ravelry group, so if anybody is finding that their socks are also too big, you can kind of go in the Ravelry group and look up the instructions that she gave for knitting uh, the sock, but staying in pattern and casting on fewer stitches. So without further ado, oh also yarn substitutions. When am I going to learn, honestly? I think, I think I've think i learned my lesson officially. When I was at Kristen's trunk show, I had a few people tell me, like, yeah, I knew that probably wasn't going to work out for you. Guys, you can tell me, okay? It would have saved me a lot of heartache, that's for sure. But yeah, it didn't work out. I love that yarn, but it was a lot heavier than fingering weight. So I had to buy something else. Sad, sad, I know. But Yarn Pimp Extraordinaire, aka uh, the owner of Do You Knit. Oh my gosh, I'm blanking on her name right now. What is it? I'm sorry. Is it Karen? I want to. I want to say. It. I can't remember for sure. She thrust a skein into my hands, and lo and behold, it was the perfect one. This is the sock so far. The fine and dandy sock by the Sweater Co. It's less than a dollar. Uh, it's like a dollar Australian, but 74 cents in the United States. The pattern I think is just gorgeous. And I love the speckled yarns. It's inspired by uh, Professor Umbridge, Dolores Jane Umbridge from the Harry Potter series, so I can kind of 
knit something for the uh, Inside Number 23 podcast, Harry Potter Cal. So that's why I picked these pink yarns. The cake itself is called Crazy Cat Lady. The yarn is stitched together. And I must really love this yarn. Here's how I know. So when I was looking up the uh, the dyer on Etsy, because I kind of wanted to make sure I had all my information right before filming, I was like, I know I've seen this before just by browsing around Etsy. And turns out I had pinned on Pinterest this exact skein on my Pinterest account. And I rarely pin actual yarn to purchase because I'm sure it's going to be gone by the next time I try to go buy it. But for whatever reason, I pinned this same color, Crazy Cat Lady, on Pinterest and I ended up buying it, you know, myself at, um, not Gage Intention, at Do You Knit. So, yeah, it's just like this peach with pinks and flecks of this like sickly green color. I thought it was perfect for Professor Umbridge. So, yeah, I thought that was crazy about how I just kind of fell in, this yarn has literally fallen into my lap. It was meant to be. So, I'm using um, size 2 millimeter needles, US zeros, and I've cast on 56 stitches, and now we are in business, and this sock is definitely going to fit. I love how the pattern is working up. I will say the flower stitches are a bit finicky, a lot of people have mentioned this, but I've been using a crochet hook for the last petal on the leaf stitch, and that's been working to great effect for me. It does slow you down a little bit, but it kind of works like stripes in that you just really want to get to the next stripe or the next row of flowers, so it grows super fast. This is after knitting the toe, which I knit four times. Um, this part really goes, this was, I did all this in one night. So, yeah. And not like, you know, for hours and hours and hours and hours. I mean, yes, like a few, but yeah. So it goes really, really fast. So that's the Fine and Dandy Sock uh, by The Sweater Co. It is a cow that I am co-hosting with Amber from the Yarn Junkie podcast. And I am having a great time knitting it. Um, the yarn, sorry, I keep forgetting to mention. The yarn is called Stitch Together, it's the Twisted Spark Base, and that's 75% Superwash Merino and 25% Nylon with Stellina, and it's a silver Stellina, 438 yards. So if you want to join the Fine and Dandy Cal, please do, we'll be happy to have you. Um, you can post about it in the Ravelry group, and the, fine, the hashtag is Fine and Dandy Cal. Lara from the Fun Knits was the one who originally introduced me to the sock pattern because she was a test knitter for it and I fell in love with it watching her podcast and told her so and I really could not wait to have the pattern come out and she has donated a beautiful prize for the Fine and Dandy Cal for me to give away. The Cal ends on April 30th, so we have plenty of time. And I'm not really, to me this is going to be a pretty relaxed knit along. If you're at least 50% done with both socks, so like you've knit either one entire sock and cast the other one on, because we're not going to go into second sock syndrome here, or you're um, knitting them two at a time and have passed the heels, then to me that's good enough to win the prize. I don't want to be pressuring anybody. So, Laura from the Fawn Knits sent us a skein of yarn. She actually sent two, and she gave one to me and then one for me to give away to you guys. So I'm going to give this away for the Fine and Dandy Cal. This is her terrarium colorway on her Raven base. And the Raven base is 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, and it's 115 grams, 425 yards. So it's just, I've gone on about Laura's yarn, but... If for some reason you haven't checked out uh, the Fawn and the Fox Etsy shop, do yourself a favor, run and check it out. Although she sells out of a lot of stuff at the beginning, like right as her updates go up. She sells project bags and now hand dyed yarn. And Laura is just one of those people who I want one of everything she makes. Like her taste is just on point girl. I love it. So this is her terrarium colorway again, beautiful greens with flecks of yellow and some orange in it. And we're going to be giving one of these away as a prize for the Fine and Dandy Cal on April 30th. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you're posting in the uh, Fine and Dandy thread on my Ravelry group because that's where I'll pull prizes from. I don't think I'm even going to do a finished objects thread. Again, this, I just want you to knit it because you want to knit it, not because 
you know, have to finish it because I know there's like tons of cows out there right now too. So thank you, Laura, for donating this absolutely gorgeous prize. I can't wait to make something out of it. So yay! Bottom the Fox, go check her out if you haven't already. Literally, I want everything she makes, especially her Grand Budapest Hotel, Grand Budapest colorway, and her, what was it? Something peach, perfect peach. I can't remember. I'm really into peach right now. So that's the fine and dandy cow. So something I want to talk to you guys about is this really seemingly heavy word called failure. So what do I have to say about failure? I know that's really weird to bring up, right? Well, tons of you in the what do you like about Brooklyn Knit Folk and what do you want to see more of uh, thread for the 1,000 subscribers giveaway mentioned, excuse me, mentioned that you just really love my enthusiasm and um, energy on this podcast and like you admire that I'm always willing to take on new stuff even if it's outside of my skill set. So here's the thing. I'm probably to an annoying point. <laughs> At least my mom would probably say that sometimes. I am probably one of the most persistent people you'll ever meet in your life. And from my perspective, it's because failure as a concept doesn't really exist to me. Here's what I mean by that. I don't mean that and like, I never fail at anything. That's stupid and bitchy and horrible. Um, what I mean by that is failure only exists if you stop trying because nothing works until something does, right? So if you're trying something new or doing something hard, you're learning stuff and you'll be so much better at it the next time that you attempt it. So if you fail along the way, which is to be expected, you should just go into it expecting that it's not going to work out the, you know, perfectly the first time. Failure is only something that happens if you stop right there. You know, it's just, I feel like a motivational speaker right now. But for me, that's just kind of how I live my life. To me, failure doesn't exist. That's all I guess I have to to say on it, but I don't know, this is getting a little bit, this is getting a little bit weird. But yeah, failure doesn't exist, just keep trying. It only exists if you stop. Other than that, it's just one step on the way of to finding whatever it is that will work. I guess that's basically what I'm trying to say. So that's your dose of, uh, you know, motivational Jacquelineism for the day. You're welcome, free of charge. What can I say? All right, guys. Acquisitions. So, something you guys said that you wanted to see a lot more of. Holy moly, it just got really sunny in here. Hope it's not gonna blow out the colors of all of this amazing yarn I have. Something you guys said you wanted to see more of on the podcast was enabling and. I never even heard that as a term before. I mean, I know you can say like you've enabled me to do this, but I so it makes sense what it actually what you're trying to say. But I hadn't didn't know that was a term until um, so many of you said it. So I just wanted to address that really quickly and <laughs> then show you a bunch of stuff that pretty much negates anything I'm telling you right now. The thing with enabling and me is that I'm not a collector of things. In fact, I'm probably the exact opposite where I'll throw things away and then realize that I need it later because I just can't stand having too much stuff. It just feels like it weighs me down. That is not to say at all that I think other people have too much stuff. I love seeing all the things that you buy. But for me personally, I'm just not a collector of things or really a stasher or a yarn hoarder. I have a modest stash, it's not large at all, but when I buy for project, when I buy, I tend to buy for specific projects in mind. There just isn't the space in my apartment to have all these beautiful things as much as I would like to, and it's just kind of not in my nature to just kind of like acquire, so I just kind of wanted to put that out there and say that, but now that I've said that, you're gonna think I'm crazy because there's all of this yarn sitting on the table that I've got, but 
excuse me, almost all of it does have a particular project in mind. One of them being Exploration Station, which as you may or may not know, is a four skein, four color pattern. So required a bit. So the first thing I want to talk about is Katrina. Katrina is the host of the Yarn 30 podcast and the genius dyer behind Cat's Kettle Yarns. She is about to have another shop update on this Saturday at 1 p.m. And she's already debuted uh, her four new colorways on her, uh, like, a little bonus episode. She also goes into a lot of detail about kind of, like, a behind-the-scenes for dyeing. So if you guys are interested in dyeing, it's not, like, a how-to tutorial for dyeing. It's more, like, organizational and... Um, I don't, just, just go watch it. If you're interested in dyeing, it will be very interesting and informative for you. So I just wanted to show off some of these amazing colors because she gifted me some mini skeins that I cannot wait to use. One of them in particular I will definitely be snatching up as soon as I can. So, I forget the name of the cartoon. I should have looked it up. It's Steven something. I don't watch it. That's the problem. But this colorway is called Pearl. And it's like this cream with flecks of kind of really bright blue, pink, and neon yellow in it. It's really gorgeous. I just haven't seen uh, the cartoon that it's inspired by, but I saw a picture of the character on her Instagram feed, and it's like dead on. So if you like this this thing, hold on. Let me look. Just let me look it up really quick. Okay, Steven Universe. Steven Universe. So. Pearl from Steven Universe. If you know who that is, I don't, but if you do, you'll probably love this. This is Pearl. It's awesome. The next one, and I love them all. I do have one favorite, but I love them all. This one is called Margot. It's like a cream color with flecks of uh, speckly blues, kind of dark blues, like speckled neons and navies. Margot is the name of her daughter, by the way. So this is inspired by her. The next one is called Party Ghoul. I love this one. I love it. It's kind of like Night of the Living Dead is having a party or something. But yeah. The color story of these is so cool. They look amazing together too. But my absolute favorite, without a doubt, Petite Fours. Look at this. How can, how can you not? Like, it's just this peach with flecks of, like, darkish browns and cranberries and yellows. Ugh, I can't get over it. I cannot get over it. I don't even know what I'm going to make with this once I buy a skein. But I, I have to have this. Have to. And her base, I believe, is 25%, or 25, 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. But I could be wrong about that. I'm not sure. I know she is making this into, um, she plans on selling these to be like a really affordable line, but these are really soft. I don't even know what this is, but I love it. All of them together, yes. But this peach though, this peach though, I can't handle it. I need it. I need it in my life. She also sent me these amazing stitch markers, which are to die for. I love them. So that's the Cat's Kettle Yarn acquisition, which was a gift from Katrina. So thank you so much. Again, uh, Cat's Kettle Yarns, Cat's Kettle on Etsy, and her shop update is this Saturday at 1 p.m. So go check it out and support her. You will not be disappointed. She also, something I really like about what Katrina does, and I didn't realize how much I would appreciate this until after I had been knitting for a while, she always knits up swatches of the yarns so you can see what they're going to look like knitted up rather than just seeing it in the skein because I know for me sometimes it's still difficult for me to tell like what a skein is going to look like knitted up so that's something I really appreciate about her uh, pictures on her Etsy so yeah cat's kettle yarns go check it out so damage was done you guys damage was done it's tax season. I got a tax return and I wanted to spend a little bit of it on yarn. I put a lot of it in savings, but you know, some yarn had to happen. So upon receiving my tax return, 
I took a little trip to Michael's. I'm gonna insert a picture here of these awesome socks that I got at Michael's of all places because they're awesome. They're just like these ruler and uh, checkerboard uh, like grid paper socks. So cool. Anyway, other things that I got while I was there. This Patton's Croy, it's a self-striping and it's called Blue Striped Rag. Patton's Croy. Patton's Croy is 100% wool, I believe. Look at that, just to be sure. Nope, 75% washable wool, 25% nylon. So, 75% wool, 25% nylon. I've seen these knitted up before and I really liked how they looked, so I'm glad that my Michaels had them. And then I also got this color, um, in Flax is the color of it, it's the colorway name. Again, 75% uh, wool and 25% nylon. And I thought that these would make some really great pattern socks. I think that they will make a pattern really shine. So that's kind of what I got those for. These were definitely inspired by Candace's stripy socks pattern. After seeing all those stripy socks, at first I was just like, eh, stripy socks are like maybe not really my thing. But then I was like, what the hell am I even talking about? The socks I wear the most that are, you know, commercial products or whatever are striped socks. So that was a total lie, I guess I tell myself. And then when I was at Michael's, Katrina and I have been having conversations in the background about things that inspire us all the time. And she came up with this totally genius idea. You may or may not know that I do a lot of like little line drawings on Instagram. And I've been trying to think of ways to kind of like take those to the next level because I feel like, you know, like there's some, gotta be something else I can do with them. She suggested, what if I got embroidery hoops and embroidery thread and embroidered them? So that's brilliant. So I got a couple cro or crochet hooks, some uh, embroidery hoops and all of these beautiful embroidery threads. You can tell I'm on the peach thing right now, obviously, but I got a lot of like mauve colors and different shades, some tans, peaches, some kind of, some greens here, a blue. So yeah, so that's gonna be coming up. I haven't picked out which drawings that I want to uh, stitch first, but I'm really excited to see how they turn out. I'm curious about how long it'll take me to do them too. I've never, I have, well I won't say never, but it's been a long time since I've like embroidered or hand stitched anything really. So I think that'll be fun. So I cannot wait to try that out and show you guys whenever I do that. The next purchase, Knit Picks. So I'm not gonna lie, Lara from The Fawn Knits, because I want to copy everything she does, showed these amazing self-striping socks by Coloring Book Yarns. And Coloring Book Yarns, I've been stalking the Instagram and the Etsy shop, but it seems like she doesn't really do updates that frequently. But I was really obsessed with the color palette more than the necessity of having striped socks. So, oh hi. Oh, we have a co-host. This is Mika, for anybody who hasn't seen her before. Say hi. No. My precious baby. Anyway. I was more obsessed with the color. <laughs> the color than anything else. So I saw this Hawthorne speckled in graffiti. And I thought it was perfect. That pinks and yellows, some black speckles in there. It's gorgeous. So I'm going to use that to make a pair of socks and use this super bright yellow for contrasting heels, cuffs, and toes. This is Knit Pick Stroll and this is uh, Hawthorne Speckled. And the fiber content on these, this is a fingering weight yarn. This one is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 50 gram ball. And this one is... 80% superwash, fine highland wool, 20% nylon. So yeah, I think these are gonna make a really awesome pair of socks. So thank you, Laura, for your endless amounts of inspiration and enabling. All right, you know what's coming next. I need something stronger than water for this talk. Kristen, Vool and Vine Yarns, Yarn Gals on Podcast, 
had a trunk show. It was at Do You Knit in Westfield, New Jersey. It's a little shop that's in a house, totally adorable, tiny, but mighty. She has some great selection in that store. Anyway, damage was done, and it's all for specific patterns, again, but I already knew going in that I had to buy a succulents uh, colorway. It's a Woodbine Yarns colorway, which I'll show you now and you'll about to see in a second. Um, I'm shopping for Exploration Station. So as you know from last week, this is the one I picked up from Gage Intention, Skinny Dipping. And I'm going to kind of use this as a neutral for the other colors that I picked out. So I knew that I had to buy succulents. That was the first one. This one is her like luxe luxury base. It's Narwhal, the Narwhal base, and it is a 70% superwash blue face luster, 20% silk, and 10% cashmere blend. Look how incredible this is, you guys. This color, I just can't get over it. Ugh, I love it so much. So this was the first purchase for Exploration Station. The second one, I was like, well, Venus Flytrap would look really cool with that. I might as well get that too. So I did. This is on her Volca base, which is her MCN. 80%, uh, I believe, yeah, 80% Superwash Merino, 10% Cashmere, 10% Nylon. So this is Venus Fly, uh, Venus Flytrap. Super dark. Uh, green, totally my kind of green. I love anything that resembles chartreuse in any way. So that was the second one purchased for Exploration Station. The next one, Do You Knit is a retailer of hedgehog fibers, and I love hedgehog fibers. This is Urchin. It's like a creamy, uh, creamy white, kind of, well, maybe not creamy, more of like a gray white. A gray white speckled with dark purple. That was the next purchase for Exploration Station. So in my head, I was like, ooh, these would be perfect together. And I love them, I love them, but on the 50% off rack, who can say no to 50% off, especially when it's one of these? This is Fiber Story yarn, Fiber Story yarn, in the color Dusty Plum. 70% Superwash Merino, 30% Silk. This bad boy, these babies are, oh man, yarn face. These are so soft, so soft. And it's like this Dusty Plum color. So I saw these and I saw there were two. It was 50% off, so I was like, well, I might as well just go ahead and get both of them. But this purple is almost a perfect match with the urchin, which me like kind of leads me to believe that instead of using the skinny dipping that I bought, which is why I don't purchase with that specific projects in mind, because now I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but I might, still, I might still use it. This purple is like a dead match almost with urchin from the Hedgehog Fibers. It's a subtle difference, I get that, but you know how I agonize over color choices if you've seen all of my changes to the doodler. So that's option one. This is option two. So again, very subtle, but I think I like the purple so much better. The problem is I have two skeins of this, so this really would be a shawl's quantity of yarn. So I feel like I owe it to this yarn to give it its proper, you know, place in the sun and knit a larger shawl just out of this yarn because this is just really so beautiful. The luster on that is incredible. So I haven't fully decided yet. I feel obligated to stick with this choice because I have the two skeins already, but this just matches so much better. So I don't know. We'll see. I'm still thinking about it. Now that I say I'm leaning towards the other one, now I'm leaning back to this using the purple anyway and figuring out something else to do with that other skein of the Dusty Plum. Because this just looks incredible together. So as you can see, I just keep going back and forth. But these are some explorations. This is not a this week purchase. This was a couple weeks ago. But now you understand part of why damage was done. And we're not, we're not even done yet. So exploration station is coming up.
I can't wait to knit that shawl. I've been wanting to make it for ages, and I couldn't really get it done in time to kind of do for Eric's uh, Sticks Plus Twine Cal, so I'm just going to knit it on my own. So that is Exploration Station. And then, so at the um, New York Nerds meetup, New York Knit Nerds, I guess I should say. It's a group on Ravelry, so if you live in the New York City area or are going to be visiting and want to join in and kind of see like when our next knitting meetup is, feel free to join and kind of keep up. But I met some really, really amazing people uh, through, through these meetups. And Julie is no exception, although she did not go to our last meeting, but she did go to a kind of just like a little random meetup that we had at Gage Intention, as we do. Julie, who is Julie Rose Sews on Instagram, has recently started dyeing yarn. You guys, I am not kidding when I say that I, like Laura, she is just one of those people who I want one of every single thing that she makes. Her aesthetic and her inspirations are just amazing. I can, you'll see, you'll see. So, Julie Rose sews. She's a fashion designer for candies. Is that not the coolest job? That would be... Anyway, I digress. So she started dyeing yarn. And her inspirations are literature, films, and nature. Which, hello, worked in a bookstore for six years. So right up my alley already. You're already speaking my language. We had a little knitting meetup the other night um, about a week and a half ago. It was like the first time that we kind of just met up for coffee after work and some knitting. We've since hung out another time and she's just so nice and so wonderful. Her first line, or not I don't know about line, but her first inspirations that she's using are The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson. Am I pronouncing it right? I can't believe I can't remember his middle name, but Frances Hodgson Burnett, you know what I'm talking about, The Secret Garden, and A Little Princess, same author. They are also amazing movies of these uh, books, which I own and watch on a semi-regular basis. Let me show you. Let me show you. I was browsing her Etsy shop, and I was having such a hard time picking out. I literally had different tabs open and was flashing between the tabs for, like, first impressions. Okay, which one can I eliminate? Which one do I have to have? And finally, I couldn't get it down to these. Like, I was only intending on buying one, but I had to have two. So the first one is this one. This one's called Secret Garden. It's on her house wren base, and her house wren base is a tweed. And let me tell you guys, if you can't already see for yourself, this tweed is just stunning. It's not like other tweed yarns I've ever seen before. I really, really like whatever this base is. The tweed is just beautiful. And it really speaks to the secret garden, you know, it's very like in line with that theme. But it's these gorgeous teals mixed with these like blush pinks and mauves. And the way that the colors kind of mix together, kind of between the colors, is just like a watercolor painting almost. It's just amazing. So this is her house run base. The house run base is 85% superwash merino and 15% nylon tweed, 438 yards. So this is the first one that I had to have. Jenny of the Tiny Paper Foxes podcast also bought the same skein, but just on a different base that's not the tweed. And um, yeah, so that's funny. This cannot be socks. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's not going to be socks. I can tell you that much. It's just like one of those yarns. When I purchase yarn without a project in mind, it's because I really, really love it. So that was definitely the case with this one. Ugh, you guys, look, just, oh, look at that. It's just, part of it too is because I just love the Secret Garden so much, so maybe you guys wouldn't be as interested in this. But go check out. She has such a variety of colors too. Like, it's not all, like, you know the same color and not all this book. She just released a Phantom Tollbooth line, which I also love that book. So go check out her yarns, Sweet Sparrow Yarns, by the way, on Etsy. Links will be in the show notes as usual, which I put in the down bar below and also on my uh, Ravelry group. So that's Secret Garden. I know I'm showing, showing this to you for way too long, but I just, I can't get over it. That was the first one. The second one that I couldn't live without <laughs> This one's inspired by A Little Princess, and the yarn is called Sarah Crew. Look at this. 
blush, blushy mauve. It's, I can't even decide if it's really mauve, it's more blush, I feel. And it has like these kind of splotches of kind of navy black, gray. And this one's on her magpie base. I'm not sure if the speckles are coming off, but she uses gold Stellina, and gold Stellina is my favorite for Stellina yarns. Look at this. Her magpie base is 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 5% gold Stellina, 438 yards. The photography for her yarns is also just amazing. Ugh, can't get over it. Maybe they'll be used together because obviously they do go really well together. I don't know yet. I don't know. I will have to wait for a pattern to tell me, tell me what it's going to be. So, one of my newest favorite dyers on the scene. I cannot wait. I, I stalk her Etsy shop. There's already another one in there called The Robin that I really, really want. But again, I need... I get very anxious when I start acquiring too much without any kind of like project in mind for it especially. And I've worked my way through a lot of my early stash that I've bought, so <sighs> we'll see. But yeah, the Robin is also another one I'm obsessed with. But Julie has offered a skein for you guys for a giveaway. This one is Secret Garden also. It's on a different base, so these are the same... Same yarns, but different bases. So the one I got that I bought was House Crow. Not House Crow, sorry. House Wren. And this one is her Nut Hatch base, which I believe is 75%. Yeah, 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And it's just this gorgeous teal with this blush pink in it. It's so beautiful. So this is a skein for you guys, and I'm going to be doing a giveaway on Instagram for this. So probably on the same post about the episode. I will do the giveaway on that episode post to kind of make it easy to find. Um, there will be, you know, instructions on the Instagram post about how you can win this beautiful skein of Sweet Sparrow yarns. Julie, congratulations, and thank you so much for sharing your amazing talent with the world, because I'm obsessed. So this is the skein for you guys again. So lovely. So lovely. And thank you for donating the skein, Julie. I can't wait to see what other people make with it and what this is going to become because, oh, this is just gorgeous. Sorry, I know I'm just like going crazy about the yarn. So those were all of my purchases. It's a lot, I know. I just... <sighs> Tax return, you know? And when Yarn Pimp Extraordinaire hands you yarn, you don't say no, okay? Oh, and speaking of Yarn Pimp Extraordinaire, at Kristen's trunk show, I got to meet Sue and Chelsea of the Legacy Knits podcast. That was so cool. I was definitely having like a fangirl moment, but not exactly fangirl. It's like when you see, when I saw them in person, I just like wasn't, I wasn't shy. It was just like I've known them for a really long time, even though I don't actually like know them, know them, but it feels like you do, you know? But so yeah, that was really, that was really fun. So yeah, with that, oh, one more, one more acquisition. Fabric. I saw this and I have to have it. You guys, I love Mexican food. I could eat Mexican food for the rest of my life. If I could only pick one type of food to eat, it would be Mexican food for the rest of my life. Look at this fabric. Hilarious! I heart tacos, fiesta, avocados, margaritas, hot sauce. This is like me in a bag. So I'm going to, I keep buying fabric for project bags and not actually making myself project bags. This is a contrasting fabric I got to go with it. And um, but yeah, I'm going to make this for myself into a project bag. It's just too funny. I love it. So yeah, okay, that really is, that one is really my last acquisition. So with that, I will leave you guys, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, if you do want to see anything um, in more detail, uh, all the show notes, again, will be posted in the down bar below and also in the Ravelry group. Don't forget to enter for me to win Mina's shawl on the Ravelry group, because I want to give it to somebody who wants to knit the pattern on Ravelry. And then to win Julie's yarn, that will be a giveaway on Instagram. 
So by the time this episode goes up, all those posts will probably be out. So yeah, if you have any questions about anything, please let me know. I hope you guys enjoy the Brooklyn Knit Folk About Town, whatever the name of it's going to be, a series is. Um, and if you have anything else that you want to see for sure, let me know, and I'll try to incorporate that into a future vlog. With that, have a great day. Bye.